Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hmm, so quiet. Uh Uh-oh. It was quiet until just one breath ago. I mean, it's so quiet you wouldn't know there was a baby in the house. At what age did Claudia learn to talk, Mother? Very, very young. Too young. (laughs) You suppose our son is going to take after? I hope not. Obviously not. There hasn't been a peep out of him all evening. Wait a few weeks until he discovers his lungs. Only a few weeks more of this blissful peace. There you go already, trying to stifle our son's natural instincts. His instincts won't bother me, but his voice will. (laughs) I suppose you'll be the kind of father who will say... Let him cry. It'll do him good. That's exactly the kind of father I'll be. We'll see. Pass me that second section of the paper, would you, Claudia? Oh, yes. Here you are. Thanks. And shh, please. You're welcome. Well, I think he's a remarkable child. He's only been home 24 hours and he's already adjusted. Remarkable. Are you adjusted too, darling? Of course. Didn't you know I was remarkable, too? You've told us often enough. Now, seriously, David, when we're sitting here in the living room, could you possibly, possibly guess that your son was here, too? Nope, he's in the bedroom. Don't split rooms. You know what I mean? You bet I know. Every time I go to the bathroom, I nearly get my head sliced off by little strings tied across with sweet little things hanging from them. Now, don't blame us for being six feet tall. If you don't like it here, you can go back to your farm. But where I go, my son goes too. And don't forget, where your son goes, those little strings and those sweet little things go along too. Mm. Is there no escape? No escape. Now, be quiet a second. What's the matter? Shh. Wished. What is it? Did you hear something? Only the quiet. Thought I heard a cry. Guess I didn't. You're a fine one, jumping at every little sound. A minute ago, you said you had the who gives a hoot attitude. Just because I thought I heard a cry doesn't mean that. Mm. Besides, can, can, can a man be interested in his son's health without rebukes? Of course he can. Are you satisfied that nothing's wrong? I'm satisfied that it's time you went to bed. I am not in the hospital anymore, and I don't have to spend the rest of my life in bed. Do as you're told. Hey, now, wait wait, wait a minute. I'll have you know you are talking to a grown-up mother, not to a two-weeks-old infant. It's not the age that counts. And it's not beauty, either. Mm, such a charming conversation. I think I'd rather be asleep any night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, but it's practically still daylight out. In Alaska, maybe. It's half past ten, and I have strict orders from your nurse who had strict orders from your doctor who left strict orders for you to be in bed early. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to bed. First. First what? Uh, I want to be sure that the formula is ready for the two o'clock feeding. It's ready. How do you know? Because I got it ready. When did you get it ready? I didn't see you get it ready. I made enough formula this morning to last until tomorrow morning. You did? Well, that was bright of you. I'll make it tomorrow. You will not. Why shouldn't I? How could you make formula? You can't even add two and two. Very funny. You coming, David? Where to? To bed, of course. But it's early. In Alaska. It's late here. Remember? That will teach you, David. Mm. Hit by a boomerang. Then come on. Before you shut the bedroom door, Claudia, give me the alarm clock. What do you want it for? Oh, can't anyone do anything around here without being asked a million questions? No, what do you want the alarm clock for? So I can set it. What do you want to set it for? So I can wake up. What do you want to wake up for? David, take her away. That's a fine answer to a simple question. What? Do you want to wake up for? My grandson's two o'clock feeding. Now, are you satisfied? No, I should say I'm not. You're to sleep right through. Through to what? Through the night, of course. I shall give the baby his two o'clock feeding. Is that understood? David, do something about it. Now, Claudia's right, Mother. You've done enough. You, yes. You've been on your feet all day. Well, I'm going to sleep until 2 o'clock. It'll only take five minutes. I haven't done a thing all day long. I shall give the baby the 2 o'clock feeding. Claudia, don't be difficult. I'm not. I'm being motherly. You going to nip me in the bud? Listen, bud, I want no nonsense from you. Or from you either, Grandma Bud. 
Neither of you shall give the baby his two o'clock feeding. You going to let him starve? And what is the matter with me? You? Me. Well, you have to get up in the morning. So I get up a little earlier. I am going to feed the baby. You're women. You need sleep. David, you can't work all day on top of a two o'clock feeding. Who says? I says. Who is you? I is I. The baby's going to work all day on top of it. Well, you can't compare yourself to him. He only weighs eight and a half pounds. All the more reason. David, you don't know how. What's so complicated about it? All I do is put the bottle in his mouth. Well, you have to burp him. Doesn't he do anything for himself? Nothing. Nothing. I want no more arguments. I'm the oldest man in the house, and I give the orders. Isn't he wonderful, Mama? Very impressive. Mm. You two women are going to sleep, and I'm going to have a small two o'clock conference with my son. We boys have many things to talk over. All right, but I shall take the six o'clock feeding. Well, there's one thing you can say for this. There are enough feedings to go wrong. <laughs> I did the two o'clock. I'll do the next. You did the ten it's o'clock. It's all yours. I mean the ten o'clock, I'm sorry. All right, now to bed with you, to sleep while we may. Sweet dreams, Mama. I shall have them. David, remember, you've got to warm the bottle in boiling water. And you can tell it's the right temperature by putting a little milk on the back of your hand, and when you don't feel it, that's when it's right. The nipples are in the little covered jar on the windowsill. I boil them. And you know, you, you take the top of the bottle off and put the nipple on instead. <laughs> Stop making it sound so complicated. You look so confused. I am a college graduate. I am an architect. I, I drank out of bottles for years myself. I remember it well. Oh, you do? Oh, yes. Now, good night, Mother. Be quiet as you go into the bedroom. You don't want to wake him up. Good night. Good night. Pampering him. What kind of a man's he going to grow up to be? Oh, wonderful man, darling. Just like his father. Shh. Look at him. Sound asleep. He's got the right idea. He must trust us an awful lot. He better had. So small. So much a part of us. I can't believe he'll ever grow up. He will. I know. Notice how he keeps his thumb out of his fist, just like a boxer. <laughs> it's funny. Women want to give birth to babies. Fathers only want men. Get to bed, darling. I'll set the clock. And don't let me catch you getting up. Not a chance. Not a one. Oh, what nice to have you, Barney, darling. Good night. Uh, is it two o'clock already? I guess it is. I guess I better get up. Oh, where's my slipper? <laughs> he isn't even awake, the rascal. No, oh, well. If I can just get this done without waking anybody up. Help! Blast this furniture. Relax, David. Yeah. Relax. Mm. It's all right. I'm awake. What are you doing awake? I thought this was my job. Nobody is robbing you of it. You can feed him every middle of the night if you like. You'll find the bottle all warmed up in the water, David. All you'll have to do is give it to him. Mrs. Brown, did you wake up to do that? I didn't wake up on purpose. I just woke up. I am insulted. Don't be. Here, I'll turn the light on. Ooh, this light is bright. Mm. You're going to put on such a production. I, I, I know you haven't slept all night. You're too smart for me. You're just busting with grand maternal instinct, aren't you? Just busting. I couldn't have slept through this even if I tried. You're sure this is the right temperature? Yes, I'm sure. Not too warm. Not too cool either. Papa, is Claudia asleep? She most certainly is. You forgot it's the middle of the night. Besides, my wife trusts me. She has more sense than I have. What do you think? Should I bring him in here or should I just give it to him in his carriage? Just give it to him. If you don't mind, I'll come in and watch. Oh, we'll be glad to have you. Come right along. Shh, Mother. If Claudia wakes up, we're sunk. Hello. We're sunk. Oh, it's a regular delegation. Mm -hmm. What are you doing up, Mama? What are you doing awake? Not sleeping. Since when? Do you think I'd go right on sleeping with an empty bed beside me? Oh, David, you don't know me at all. You're just afraid you'll miss something. How right you. you are. He's not asleep either. Who isn't? Who is the only other he around here? That small thing in the carriage. He's not a he yet. He, he isn't anything yet, except a troublemaker. Don't you talk like that in front of him. Don't you know that children are supposed to understand everything? What books have you been reading? None, but every mother knows that. 
Here you are, fellow. Here's your bottle. He can't take it with his hands, David. You've got to give it to him. Spoon feeding? Without a spoon. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. He's just glad to see you. Mm. All right. All right. You don't have to flatter me now. Just keep quiet. Don't gurgle. Just take your bottle like a grown-up boy and help yourself. What a lovely little scene. Go on, go on, take it. Doesn't he want it? He's supposed to be hungry. It's two o'clock. Maybe he can't tell the time yet. <laughs> hey, he's going back to sleep. His face is puckering up. David, put it in his mouth before he starts crying. He'll drown. Oh, David, no. you're helpless. Just put it in his mouth like Mama says. Uh, open your mouth. He doesn't have to open his mouth. Do you mean I just push it in? Sure. Yes, dear. Uh, what a lot of gums he has. Now, don't insult him. There you are, old man. Certainly is a good thing you woke up, Mama. David would have sat up waiting for the baby to turn around and say he wants the bottle. <laughs> well, how else is a man supposed to know? Is he taking it? Oh, he's making a pig of himself. It's all running down the side of his face. Look at that. Sweet. He hasn't learned to swallow either. Doris, his son, isn't it nice, Mama? He betrays himself with every insult. Shh. Now be quiet. You'll distract him. Now more than ever, I'm glad we had a baby. Why at this hour? Oh, rest of the city asleep. Four of us get together. And all because of one smart little baby. I like this. It's so cozy. There is a new point of view. It's barbaric. Gosh, that milk sounds good. He's taking it pretty fast, too. Good boy, good boy. Mm, he's making me thirsty. <laughs> How old are you? Old enough to be thirsty. I'm starving. Goodbye, you two. Claudia, where are you going? I'm going to eat. Any objections? Come to think of it, I could stand a little cold chicken myself. Cold chicken? Hey, hey, wait for me. You are feeding your son, darling, remember? Coming, Mama? Hey, no fair. Save a wing for me. You know, you've really got to hand it to children. Hand what? Babies know best. But never too late to learn. Isn't a two o'clock feeding a wonderful idea? Dum, 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 dum. Dum, dum, da, dum, dum. Many far-sighted communities provide youth centers where teenagers can congregate for wholesome fun. That fun frequently centers around the Coke cooler. Young people like to have Coca-Cola at home, too. They like it themselves after homework or household chores. And they're particularly pleased when they can offer hospitality to their friends. Buy Coke by the case, and there'll always be plenty on hand for the whole family's ready hospitality. Mr. King, if you're hungry, we'll give you a bite to eat and a Coca-Cola. Claudia is right. There's a lot you can learn from babies. Two o'clock feedings are very nice. I've always thought so, though many's the time I slept right through them. I wonder how long this enthusiasm of Claudia and David's will last. Well, with... with Claudia and David, you never can tell. That's what I like so much about those two. Of course, they still don't fully realize what having a baby in the house means. But on Monday, they'll get a better idea. Why, what's happening Monday, Mrs. Brown? A good deal. Three adults and a baby in a small apartment can get pretty congested around breakfast time. Will I see you then, Mr. King? You certainly will, Mrs. Brown. So long. So long, Mr. King. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. The entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> 